Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting sand dunes on the beach. This was my second attempt because I wasn't satisfied with what I made the first time and hopefully the steps are also clearer now. Like usual, for the landscapes and sceneries, I like to mask the sides of my paper first before we start painting. I wanted to paint this one because I saw images of sand dunes by the beach and it just reminded me of the beaches close to my house when I used to live in Australia. So I just had a look at a whole bunch of pictures and I came up with my own composition. As for the sketch, I'm going to draw on the horizon line to separate the sea and the sky. And then I want to also draw layers of tall sand dunes in the foreground to determine the rough composition of this painting. I like to include vegetations here and for this I added clumps of them. This was the mistake that I made earlier where the greeneries ended up looking flat. So for this I made sure to sketch out the clumps to make it easier for me to visualize the depth of the composition and to separate those areas with the sand. I like to think of how they will overlap and how it will affect the composition and also which ones are behind the sand dunes. So that's it for the sketch. Next, I'm going to go over the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Half Titanium by Daniel Smith, Azure Blue by White Knights, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, Azo Yellow by M. Graham, Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal, Queen Sienna by Daniel Smith, Cobalt Blue Hue by Holbein, Ains Grey Bluish by Schminka, and lastly Bleed Proof White by Dr. P. H. Martins. Okay, so let's paint. I'm going to tackle the sky first and for this I'm just going to wet the surface lightly and evenly. Then I use a thick consistency of cobalt blue and I try to paint the sky by leaving out white negative space for the clouds. I'm only painting the top section for now and as I get towards the bottom I'm going to switch to buff titanium. My brush still has a little bit of the cobalt blue still, so the color turns into sort of like a pastel blue. I'm going to bring down the paint until it reaches the sea. Then after this, I'm going to take a clean tissue and roll it up so I can use it to lift some paint for the edges of the clouds. I'm only going to lift some parts while I leave others with a softer blend of the wet paint. So parts of the cloud are more defined while others are a bit more wispy to give it a natural look. As the paint settles, it is going to fade slightly so I'm just going to build up the colors whenever I feel the need to. And while the surface is still wet, I'm also going to add on a little bit of shadows for the clouds by using a thin to medium consistency of moon glow. I'm imagining layers of cloud clumps and I'm going to paint the bottom of each section of those clumps and also add some darker clouds on the blue sky with a thicker consistency. So that's basically it for the sky portion and now I'm just going to add more pigments to keep building the vibrancy and to also get cleaner edges around some of the clouds. I also want the top to be more blue than the bottom so I want to use a thicker consistency at the very top of the sky and add more water as I get towards the bottom. 
Next, I'm going to work on the water. I want the sky to be mostly dry by now. Then I'm going to wet the water area lightly and evenly. I'm going to wet it just over the pencil mark. Then I'm going to start painting by using a thick consistency of azure blue. And I also want to start below the pencil mark. So there's a little bit of space underneath because I want the C to have a slightly softer edge. As I get towards the bottom, I use buff titanium again until I'm close to the shoreline. So there's a slight transition of color. I continue downwards to paint lines on the lighter area. Then I follow it up using a thick consistency of cobalt blue to paint the edge of the water as the surface is getting less wet. After that, I'm just going to dry this off and move on to a different section. The vegetation that I'm going to paint are very textured, so I want to paint them on before I paint the sand. I first use a mix of Aquarius Green, Yellow Ochre, and Azo Yellow, and I switch out the ratios to get distinctly different tones of greens. And I use a thick consistency of these greens and place them within the patches that I've sectioned out. I also follow this up by using my liner brush and I flick my brush upwards in order to get those long grassy texture. Notice how I play with the values and tones by sometimes using a very thick consistency of Aquarius Green by itself and at times I also like to use Yellow Ochre for more of an earthy tone. I pile the colors on next to each other as they're still wet so I get this loose wet on wet effect but with a crisp edge as I'm painting them on a dry surface. Depending on how you want to place the vegetation, if some clusters are going to overlap with one another, I would paint the one in front before painting the ones at the back so you know which areas to avoid painting. So here I'm moving right into the foreground to paint them on and because they are closer to the foreground, I'm also going to use more colors for added detail. Instead of just warmer earthy tones, I added cooler greens as well by adding cobalt blue to the green mix, but I'm going to treat them the exact same way using the same techniques. If the texture at the bottom of the vegetation looks a bit odd, you can add extra lines using the liner brush to make the texture look cohesive. And I like to also add on the different colors using this brush if parts of the vegetation looks too heavy with a certain amount of green tone and you want to break up the shape. After that, I'm going to move on to the cluster right behind this one. So I don't forget that my intention is to avoid painting right on top of the vegetation. Instead, I'm going to leave out the negative spaces around the vegetation in front. This is to make sure that both of the clusters are separate, but it still looks like they're overlapping each other. You can also just stick with the liner brush if you don't want to switch your brush around. I just find it a bit easier to use a slightly larger brush for bigger clusters, but for smaller ones like this, you can just stick with the liner brush and create the same effect. Here I decided to also include quinciana to be part of the color of the vegetation, but I want to limit this color as just accents, so I like to add thin lines randomly to the greeneries. The vegetation that I've painted so far are placed on top of the sand dunes, which is why the bottom has the similar grassy texture. But for this one, I want it to be placed behind the sand dune. So for this, I want to make sure that the bottom isn't showing. Instead, I'm painting right on top of the sand texture. <laughs> 
I'm trying to focus on the larger clusters for now instead of adding lone grassy textures as we can add that towards the end as final details and these clusters are just going to help with the depth of the painting if we paint how the vegetation overlaps correctly. This was my mistake on my first attempt so make sure you pay attention to how they're being placed. I'm going to leave the vegetation to dry for now and move back to the water. I'm going to use the same colors as before. I'm using cobalt blue for the top section. I'm just painting them as lines at the moment and after this I'm going to continue down with the azure blue and after that I'm going to add some buff titanium and I like to jump around between those colors to create variations in the tones of blue. Moving on to the sand, I first use a mix of buff titanium with yellow ochre. I like to follow the direction of the sand with my brush strokes so you can see that I'm creating this curved lines for the pathways and I like to alternate the color by giving a little bit of quinciana as extra accents. After I paint the pathway, I move on to the sand dunes which I use basically the same color mixture for the base color from buff titanium and yellow ochre. As for the sand dunes, I like adding moon glow with yellow ochre together and like usual, I like playing around with different ratios in order to get different tones. And I place them sideways and also under some of the vegetations that I've painted. This can be placed quite randomly as sand dunes will have slopes. And I'm also going to add more of a darker tone closer to the foreground, which means I would add a higher ratio of moon glow. Just like the sand on the pathway, I like to also add a little bit of accent color. And for this, I use a mixture of cobalt blue and moon glow, and I just place them randomly in some parts of the shadows. As I increase the value towards the foreground, I like to add a little bit of Payne's Grey Bluish to the moon glow in order to darken the shadows. At the moment, I feel like the sand vegetation and the shadows all look separate. And in order to make it more cohesive, I like to add the shadow color on top of the vegetation as well. So there's a cohesion in the tone of colors. Once I'm done, I'm just going to dry this off and move on to the next area. I'm going to keep layering on more colors to increase the vibrancy for the water. For this, I use Paints Grey Bluish for an even darker tone of blue and I follow this up using Azure Blue and I switch to my smaller brush so I can make finer lines. I'm going to be very careful once I reach close to the vegetation area. I'm going to try to avoid painting right on top of the colors in order to avoid muddying the greens. I'm going to personally keep layering on the colors until it reaches the vibrancy that I like. But because it is the background, you can also leave it a little bit more faded if you would like to. Moving back to the foreground again, I like to layer on more colors to increase the vibrancy just like what I did with the background and I also like to add the finer vegetations as additional detail to the painting. For these finer details, I tend to use a really dark consistency of a mixture between Aquarius Green and Paints Grey Bluish and this is to stand out against the base color that I've painted already. I like to also add these on top of the vegetations that I've already painted so there are layers to the texture. And I'm just basically going to keep layering on to add on the vibrancy of the shadows and the details as well. To add on the shadows, I switch to my smaller brush now in order to get finer details and I also try to mix it with a bit of a dry brush consistency for added details. <laughs> 
Here comes the fun part. You guys know how much I love adding bleed proof white to my paintings. And for this, I use a dry brush consistency in order to get wavy textures. I mostly just painted lines for the distant waves, but as I get closer to the foreground, I like to add a bit more texture in the middle so the sides are a bit thinner compared to the middle portion. I'm still using a dry brush consistency. And as I get towards the shoreline, I made the lines more wavy in order to suggest the foam on the shoreline and then I added shadows using azure blue underneath the foam and also the waves closer to the shore. You can technically stop here but I really love the reference images that I found where there are these wheat looking grass things on the beach so I'm going to try to add that on. I first used Bleed Proof White as the base and then I colored it in using a mix of Yellow Ochre with a tiny bit of Quinciana and Aquarius Green. You can also mix Bleed Proof White into the color that you're going to paint with to make them a bit more opaque which is what I'm going to do for the right hand side to see the difference but it won't be as clear and as opaque compared to having the opaque white base painted on first. And to paint this on, I used my liner brush with a light load on my brush in order to get those really fine dotted lines for the wheat texture and the very thin stem. I'm going to redo these grassy texture again on the right hand side to make them a bit more clear. So I'm just using the white base again and then I'm going to paint on the color. I'm going to leave this to dry for now and I'm going to use the bleed proof white again to create tiny bits of splatters on the foreground and then I use a damp brush to create lines as additional highlights to those grassy areas for added detail. I also went back in with the dry brush consistency of moon glow to add extra texture to the sand. And I'm also going to do this with a tiny bit of bleed proof white to break up a certain chunk of color. I don't know if you noticed, but I also ended up adding a dark brown to those grassy wheat things at the back. I used a mix of Quinciana with Paints Grey Bluish to paint the darker tones for this grass. I didn't use the reference for this so I ended up making them too dark for my liking. I still would add the darker tone so it doesn't look too flat but if I were to do this again I would use a thinner consistency for the dark brown. So just be mindful of this if you're going to paint along. I also added some leafy plants in the foreground. This isn't necessary because it wouldn't really be impactful enough to change the overall composition if you're looking at it from afar. I just really like tiny small details added if you were to look at the painting up close which is why I decided to paint them on. But of course this is completely optional. So this is the finished painting. I'm just going to show you my first attempt where I didn't draw out the clumps of vegetation so I didn't have a clear idea on the depth of the painting and as you can see I ended up muddying the colors and I lost a lot of the vibrancy due to too many corrections. So that's it for this painting. I really enjoyed painting this one and I love the combination of colors. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use for this painting will be in the description box along with my social media links. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!